Hi, I'm Howard Simon, co-host of Fan TV on the Empire Sports Network. And I'm Jim Brinson. You can catch us live weekdays from 4.30 till 7 on the Empire Sports Network as we bring you sports news and features daily. And we're here to talk championship hockey, Rochester American style. Hockey fans, the 1995-96 American Hockey League season was one of the most exciting in recent history. 18 teams battled through 720 regular season games to reach the AHL playoffs. The goal was simple. The Calder Cup, one of North America's most cherished and oldest hockey trophies. In the AHL's 60th season of play, one team would hoist the silver chalice at the end of the long nine-month season. Rochester Americans celebrating their 40th season of play in professional hockey's best developmental league bring pride and tradition to the city of Rochester with their exciting, aggressive play. Now, the Amherst have always been near the top of attendance leaders in the AHL as hockey fans flock to the Rochester War Memorial to see their hometown boys wear the red, white, and blue. The 1995-96 season for the Amherst was a season of change. President Steve Donner and a group of investors had purchased the team from the Buffalo Sabres during the summer. And while the Sabres continue a working agreement with Rochester, the club was now responsible for helping to put a contending team on the ice. Head coach John Tortorella was hired to guide the team from behind the bench, his first head coaching position at the AHL level. Veteran forwards Dan Frawley, Scott Medcalf, Craig Chiron, Dixon Ward, and Dane Jackson help rookies Barry Moore, Brian Holsinger, Curtis Brown, and Wayne Primo up front. While Terry Hollinger and Doug Huda assisted defenders Ruman Endur, Sergei Klementiev, and Shane Wright as the team grew together over the 80-game schedule. It was a rough first half of the season for the Amherst as the team sat in last place by the new year with a 13-23-2 record. But 24 wins in their last 42 games lifted the Amherst into third place in the Central Division and a spot in the playoffs. Well, the team was gelling with goaltender Steve Shields, almost unbeatable. The Amherst swept their first two series, three games to none, over Adirondack, and four games to zero over Cornwall. Now, in the Calder Cup semifinals, Rochester met their throughway rivals, the Syracuse Crunch, and they made short work of their neighbors as they defeated the Crunch four games to one. With an 11-1 playoff record and a Western Conference championship, the Amherst headed to the Calder Cup Finals. The Portland Pirates had a similar season, sneaking into the playoffs, then winning three straight series to challenge Rochester for the Cup. Rochester captured the first two games of the best-of-seven series at home, then lost the next two in Portland. With the series tied and Game 5 in Portland, Scott Nickel of the Amherst scored in overtime to send the series back to Rochester, with the Amherst leading three games to two. Rochester fans were anticipating an appearance by the Calder Cup in Game 6 at the War Memorial. However, the gritty Pirates refused to buckle. They tied the series at three games apiece with a stunning 5-1 win in front of a capacity crowd of 7,489. This sets the stage for the very last professional hockey game played in the world for the 1995-96 season. Game 7 between the Portland Pirates and the Rochester Americans. One game for the championship of the American League. The winner to drink out of the Calder Cup. The Rochester Americans and the Empire Sports Network are proud to present from the War Memorial in Rochester, New York, on Thursday, June 13, 1996, Game 7 of the Calder Cup Finals. Don Stevens is calling the play-by-play, -play, Larry Playfair providing color commentary, and Bill Pucko is serving as the host. Cup Finals, Game 7, a best of one. To get here, the Rochester Americans won the first two to protect home ice. The Portland Pirates took Games 3 and 4 to stay in and then even the series. Rochester rebounded to claim Game 5 and avoid a sweep in Portland. Then on Tuesday, the Pirates stare down elimination to win Game 6, extending the series to the max. In each case, the game was won by the team that needed it more. The Empire Sports Network brings you the Calder Cup Finals, Game 7, a best of one, where neither needs it more. Greetings 
Thanks from the Rochester Community War Memorial, site of the final professional hockey game anywhere in North America in the 1995-96 season. Bill Pucko, Don Stevens, Larry Playfair, and Frank Calder's Cup with you tonight. This is going either to the Portland Pirates or the Rochester Americans, whichever team wins the critical seventh game. And Larry Playfair, what is on the ice is one of the things that's going to determine which team takes it home. Well, I think it, it comes down to goaltending, and I think Ron Tugnut, who's played so well for this Portland team, played great the other night. Steve Shields struggled a little bit. Steve Shields, who doesn't have a whole lot of experience, is only playing in his second professional season, and you see it up here on the screen. And he's 23 years of age. Conversely, Ron Tugnut's had a whole bunch of experience. Stevie's only had one game in the National League. Ron's had 225. Ron's a little bit older, and he's played uh, nine professional se seasons. So I think the experience factor right now goes towards the goaltending for the Portland squad. All right, Don Stevens, you do the play-by-play -play tonight. This is really, uh, it sounds trite, but it's almost a no-lose situation because both teams have done a lot to get here. Almost call it a Cinderella story for either team. And when you stop and think about it, if one team comes from the basement all the way to get into the Calder Cup Finals, that's something. But if two teams do it the same year to end up playing against each other in the Finals, that's just about unbelievable. And that's what we have here, because back on January the 31st of this year, the league standings show that the Rochester Americans were 17th out of 18 teams in the league with 43 points. The Portland Pirates were 18th with 39 points. And both teams were 10 games under 500, scrambling just to make it to the playoffs. But in the second half of the season, the Amherst were seven games over 500. The Pirates went five games over 500. And this is the first time in league history that the two teams who finished under 500 in the regular season have played in the finals for the Calder Cup. So incredible stories either way. But it's been a great series. We expect nothing less out of Game 7. I think it's going to be a very exciting evening right here tonight, yes. All right, we're thrilled to be here with you. The keys to victory, as I see it, first of all, for the Rochester Americans, involve the fans early, get the crowd into it. That didn't happen in Game 6. They played flat off the top and got blown out. For the Portland Pirates, patience. Rochester figures to come out hard and be the better team early. If Portland can hang on, the longer they do that, the better chance they have to win. And for both teams, seize the moment. There's a real sense of history. The Calder Cup is going to be awarded tonight, and it's going to be rewarded to the team that has a better sense of what's really going on here and the fact that the winner is going to be remembered in the American Hockey League forever. We're looking forward to the start of tonight's game from the Rochester Community War Memorial. It's the Pirates and the Amherst Game 7. We'll be back with the opening face-off in just a moment. tonight at the War Memorial here in Rochester, New York, and you see the fans are standing and screaming their lungs out, getting ready for Game 7 of the Calder Cup Championship Series. And Larry, the house is electrified again tonight. Boy, isn't it? And it's fun to be around for Game 7. This should be a good show. As we have the National Anthem, Flora Allen. By the dawn's early light What's so bright we hear at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallant streaming and the rockets reflect the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there or not, but well done. <laughs> it's an exciting moment in the history of the American Hockey League Game 7 of the Calder Cup Finals. Tonight, the Rochester Americans and the Portland Pirates all even up at three games apiece 
and the great expectation on the part of the Rochester Americans fans here in attendance. We look at the goaltenders and talk about pressure on individuals, and it's on these two gentlemen. In goal for the Pirates, Ron Tugnett at 5'11", 165 pounds, 28 years of age from Scarborough, Ontario. You see his playoff record has done an excellent job thus far. At the other end, also doing a great job so far in the playoffs, Steve Shields, 23 years of age from Toronto, Ontario, 6'3", 210 pounds, and both goaltenders have really supported their team very well. Well, they really have, and I, and I said to, at the top of the show that Steve Shields didn't have his best game in the playoffs. He didn't the other night, but he played a pretty good first period and he gave his team a chance at least. Wayne Angus, the referee, the linesman, Mike Smith, and Dan Murphy, and we're set to go as Rochester will start out with their top firepower line of Holzinger at center ice, Ward on the left side, Kahn on the right side, and it's Allison Gendra and uh, Batherson up front for the Pirates. Lots of firepower on the ice right here, and we're underway. Fans haven't stopped yelling as the puck is cleared into the Portland zone, then flipped off the boards and down ice, and the Amherst will chase after it. This is it. It all comes down to the last play of the season. Hooked in behind the net after it, Hollinger sends it off the wing. Khan catching up, able to slide it out of the zone and take it back by the Pirates, dumped in by Lace. Shield stops the puck from behind his net, carried away by Hollinger, ran into his own helmet. He does get the puck out of the zone, dumped in again, and the Pirates have to clear the zone, and the Emmerich set it up. Just half a minute gone in this game. Just getting underway. Tonight in Rochester, and the puck flipped in the air and all the way down ice. Fired away off the boards to center ice. Nickel will dump it in for the Amherst. Tugnet stops it behind his net. Picked up there by the defenseman Steve Potts, who was one of those on this uh, Calder Cup championship team for the Pirates back in 94. Puck poked away and down ice. Race for the puck. Shields hesitates. Now he comes out of the net, shoots it off the far boards. Got toward the net, blocked aside by Shields. And it was a race between Shields and the leading goal scorer in the American Hockey League playoffs, Martin Gendra. And Shields won the race on that one. Puck in behind the net. Pirates trying to dig it out. Out in front, Burnett slips into the side of the net. Grab by Shields. Holds on. Nickel and Burnett do a little pushing. That wraparound play you saw Burnett just try is what cost the Rochester Americans two goals the other night in game six. Steve Shields knows all too well about that. This game is the most important game that young man has played in his career. He's going to enjoy it tonight, I'm sure. John Tortorella told me that the thing he wants his team to do is to dump the puck in and then chase it. They weren't able to do that in Game 6, and he said they've been successful in the playoffs by doing it. This Portland team has been able to, at least in Game 6, sort that off. Base off coming to the left of Shields. Here you see John Tortorella in his rookie year behind the bench for the Rochester Americans. Dan Murphy, the linesman, he's a policeman in his off time or regular duties. What have you, up in Tonawan to New York. It's around your neck of the woods. Is there any reason why you know that, should I ask? I've seen him. <laughs> he stopped me once. <laughs> Greg Saran of the Rochester Americans against Jason Christie of the Portland Pirates. Buck is dropped. Taken by the Amherst, Planetti of in behind. Huda sends it around the wing for Jackson, the team captain. Sharon sends it cross rink to center ice, and that's picked off by the Pirates. Dumped down into the Rochester zone again. Huda plays it around, but not out. Blocked and kept in by the Pirates. Side stepping on the track, and the puck cleared away into the corner. Now shot toward the net by McCoslin, dribbles wide. And for the point, kept in by Pascucci. Sends it in behind the Rochester net, all the way off on the other side for Mazur in the corner. And the net, Christie trying to dig it out. Gets jammed up on the back boards by Clementia. Now it's pulled loose by McCoslin, and he's hit again by Clementia. In to help out for the Amherst is Jackson, but Christie tries to pull it loose. Jackson pokes it behind the net. Mazur chases it down, had a goal and an assist last game. In behind the net, Clementia slides it around the other side this time. Moore gets out of the zone, and down ice. It's chased down by the Pirates. They sell around behind his net. Leads it on the far wing, but it's kept in now by Jackson. Into the corner, gets tied up, puck pulled off his stick, and here come the Pirates. Up the wing, this is dumped in by Christie, and ends up in the corner. Melanson back for the Amherst. Sends it in behind, around to his defensive partner, Terry Hollinger, but can't get it out. Now it's pulled away by the Amherst, and Moore slips it to center ice. Kahn gives it off to Holzinger. Back to Kahn, moving and teasing up the shot. Missed the wide side. Around the boards, blocked. Off the stick of Jindra, pops out the center ice and recovered again by Holzinger. He'll dump it in. No score in the game. Played almost three minutes. One shot on goal, and that by the Pirates. Back to the point. Hollinger with a shot. And it's blocked aside by Tugnut. Get her down in front, and nobody there for Rochester. Puck fired out the center ice by Brunat. Sends it up the wing to Jindra, but getting back is Hollinger to knock it away. He'll beat it off to uh, Melanson. 
In behind. It's the side of the net. Comes loose to the side of the net. And recovered now by Balanchin. Little nervousness, it looks like, on the ice. The Amherst almost give it away. This is Ward working up the near boards. Way to center ice to the red line. Has Frawley with him. Ward moving in. Backhands it toward the net. But it's knocked off the stick by Eric Sharon and carried away by the Pirates. Through the net. Off on the wing. Moving in. Pops a long shot. Just missed the right side. Rebound put across the goal mouth out the other side by Allison. Kept in now. Here's Zednik trying to weave his way in front. That's pulled off his stick. Still kept in. Now intercepted in the corner. And Huda able to clear the zone. It'll be chased down by Pops. Racing his way down. Pops back for the puck. Off the boards. Blocked by Nickel. The Amherst keep it in. Nickel in the corner trying to get away from Allison. That's poked behind the net. Up in the opposite corner. Frawley moving in. Sends it in behind. Metcalf trying to dig it out. Looking for the backhander in front. Couldn't get it to Nickel. And the Pirates have the puck. They crash into the corner. Allison will flip it in the air and out of the zone. Buda takes it back. Rips it in. Shots even now at one apiece. No score in the game. We're just getting started. Here now, it's thrown away by Zednik. Breaking in. Slowed up with the hook. It's a shot away. Pad save. Rebound. They score! Pirates score. Trailing the play. Looks like Batherson puts it away. And the first shot stopped by Shields, but Batherson backhands the rebound in. The Pirates score first and lead 1-0. Batherson makes a great play following up in the play. There was a goofy play made at the blue line. Kamenev got caught. He got beat with the puck, a great shot on net, and Batherson, you just saw a follow-up in the play, here you see it again. Kamenev get caught, got caught, Zednik takes off, he gets a pretty good shot away, even though he's falling down, he gets the shot away, the rebound comes right out, watch this, right between Steve Shields' leg, it cost him two the other night between his leg, you can't blame him for that shot, he had already given up the rebound, but made the big save, he didn't get any help, and Rochester now in their own building finds himself down by one. So it's Norm Batherson scoring his 11th of the playoffs. As the Pirates score first, the puck in the zone, the whistle stops play. 1-0, fourth and nine top in this game. And we're glad to have you with us tonight. You're watching the American Hockey League's Calder Cup Finals on the Empire Sports Network. It's 17 seconds played in this game in a one-goal game. Portland on top, and Rochester wanting to try and stem the tide that uh, the Portland Pirates got rolling last game. There, you see Barry Trotz, the head coach of the Portland Pirates. I had a chance to talk to Paul Gardner just before the game, and he said we're going to try and do exactly what we did in Game Six, and that's to get the fans out of the game early. And he, his team did that with that early goal. Uh, Pice now bounces with a shot, puts it over top of the man, and the puck in behind, poked out in front, and now carried off. Or slides to the Hollinger. Gives it to Sharon. Works his way up ice. The red line. The blue line. Moving in. Takes a shot. Puts it over top of the net. Around to the point. Hollinger slides it in front. Nobody there for Rochester. And the Pirates have the puck. This is Christie. A swing to center ice for Jay Mazur. Started out the year here in Rochester. Then was traded away. Loose in the slot. Carried off by Greg Sharon to Kahn. And now tips it off to Barry Moore. The rookie winger dumps it in. Then hits for the bench on a line change. Kahn into the corner. And it gets tied up there. And the puck pulled away by the Pirates. Off of the far wing. That's across the blue line to center ice. Hammers pick it up. Turning back in the zone now. Dixon Ward tied for the league lead in points in the playoffs with 33. Pass under foot. The Watson hits the skate and it's kicked aside and brought up ice by the Pirates. Huda off to Ward. Entering the zone. In the slot. Moving in. Here's Khan. Whistle down. Offside. Perfect setup. The Amherst were in two on one. But uh, just a step ahead was Khan. And there you see Khan skating back. He knows he was offside. He I was going to tell a player otherwise goes and argues with the linesman, but that was a nice pass by Dixon Ward. Just before that, there was another great pass by Dixon Ward over to Holzinger as Holzinger broke in on the, I think you're going to see the offside pass right here. Yeah, this is Con. You see him offside already? So Holzinger's offside. Holzinger was the one to step over first. But Holzinger got a great pass a little bit earlier than that on the, just the play before from Ward. And a great save by Tugnick kept that one out of the net. Picked up again. Many of able to slide it into the Portland zone. Pops back, sends it around. Stopped in the corner by Frawley. Behind the net for Nichols, spinning around to the backboards. Pops ties him up. Metcalf moving in, looking to kick it loose and does. Metcalf coming out in front, still has the puck. Backhander hits a skate, ends up in the corner. Frawley trying to dig it out. Pops up on the backboards. Nickel tied up there by Pops. Has the puck in his glove, is down on his knees. Nickel poking at him, pushing away, and the puck pops loose and now carried off by the Pirates. Here to center ice as the players get tangled up and go all which ways. Here's Eric Sherrod in the zone, wound up, faked his shot, and the puck now is deflected into the corner. Backboard goes Clementia. Comes away from the corner with the puck. Kicks it ahead, catches up to the puck, and now moves it up ice and dumps it in. Sherrod back. Anonymous Frawley. 
Uh, puck is centered around behind the net. Medyev trying to get to it, to the point. Keeps it in momentarily. That's Frawley in the slot, but he's all by himself. Gets pulled off the puck, and it's taken back by the Pirates. A uh, vice Allison trying to move by Melanson. Centering pass is picked off and carried off by Metcalf, and the Emmerich have it back. Metcalf flips it in the air all the way down ice. Bouncing puck, back for it goes to Balgunas. Corner being chased by Curtis Brown, the rookie winger on the ice for the first time tonight. Out the center ice, knocked loose at the red line. On the uh, wing is Primo, the other newcomer. Out of junior hockey on the ice for the Amherst. That's not picked out of midair by Melanson. And the Pirates up with the puck. Allison dumps it in. Far side, here's Zednik. Gets the puck through in on goal, but he can't get a shot away. And now it's Brown. Slips it off the boards. The point's still kept in, however, by the Pirates. Zednik, also out of junior hockey. Portland in the Western League. Long shot and grabbed by Shields. Holds on for the faceoff. 1-0 Portland leading. 12.58 to go in the first period. And you're watching the American Hockey League's Calder Cup Finals right here on the Empire Sports Network. For the first goal, they're 10-2. And, and they have just done that. There's just over half of this first period gone by. You know, this is an interesting statistic on the other side, though. And when Rochester in the playoffs has allowed the opposition to score first, they also have a winning record. Five wins and three losses. Well, when the chips were down in this series, both these teams were able to step up. When Portland faced elimination in Game 6, they were able to win a big game. And when uh, Rochester needed Game 5 up in Portland, they were able to pull that one off. Hawk is dumped out and down ice, and the Pirates back. Eric Chiron after it. And in Game 7 of the previous series, it was a 5-0 shutout for Portland over the St. John Flames. That coming on the heels of a 5-2 uh, win over the Flames in the game before that. They had to win two on the road and did it. And they're trying to repeat history here tonight. Here come the Amherst now, 2-on-2. Two two. Melanson with that gap. Melanson enters the zone. And the whistle to stop play is back up ice. A couple of players were tangled up. Frawley of the Amherst. And uh, we have a penalty coming up to the Pirates and heading off. Looks like Burnett. They both will be going up. Renette of the Pirates and Frawley of the Amex. These are the first penalties of this game. Well, you pretty much are going to know that they, any chance the referee is going to get to call a penalty if it's going to be two players is going to let it happen. If it's a little rougher, he might let things slide tonight. This, is two the, this game is too important. The referees don't want to get caught making a call. It might be suspect. We're going to have a four-on-four four situation. John Tortorella is just talking to his troops now. Doug Huda comes out on the ice with Klemeniev. John Tortorella, who was a little frustrated after the last game. He had a pretty good feeling about his hockey club before the game started. As the game wore on, his team seemed to be really frustrated by a pretty good Portland hockey club. They played a little tentative as well. The LH team will be a man short now. 12.30 remaining in the first period in a one nothing Portland Pirate League. Trying to win the Calder Cup two out of three years. Not too shabby at all for this franchise. Buck drop. Now pulled out the center line. Shendra trying to get loose. Goes down. Penalty coming up to Rochester. Hooking call. And this will be a power play opportunity for the Portland Pirates. And you get an opportunity on a four and four situation. And you see the opportunity right here come because Doug Huda hauls down. The player, Klemeniev, finally gets the loose puck, but it's already after. The penalty's already been called, and the Portland Pirates now have a golden opportunity, as they did in Game 6, to go up 2-0. They got a power play opportunity with that man right there, Dougie Huda, in the penalty box. Talk about room to skate right now, Larry. Lots of room on the ice. Well, there is now. You're right. With the Rochester Americans having only three players on the ice, Portland has four. And you see the frustration on the Rochester coach, John Tortorella. First power play opportunity of the game for the Pirates. And in the power play. Last six games, only two of 28 in their series for the Pirates. That's only 7.1% on the power play. And conversely, the Amherst penalty killing has been outstanding, killing off 26 of 28 opportunities in this series. And right now, again, there's a lot of room. As the Pirates one man short, the Amherst two men short. Puck is in the zone. It's taken by Malgunas, has it at the right point. McCausland is pointing and uh, uh, gets the puck now, moves in a step, takes a shot, hits the side of the net. In behind, Jindra knocked off his stick. Henderson's around the wing, but can't get it out. At the point, McCausland. 
Drives it to McCart to uh, now Dunich. Shendra in behind the net. Looked like he wanted to slip it in the short side, but passes now to Mal Dunich. Uh, there's uh, Mal Dunich with the shot. On the line of pure boards, it's fired out to center ice by Hollinger. A minute eight to go in the coincidental minors. Pirates have the puck. This is McCausland beginning to work his way out by. Enters the Amherst zone, drops it off to Gendra, pass through the slot. The point now is Leach on the left point. Back to McCausland, out top for Leach. Takes a look, doesn't shoot. Look for the pass out in front, can't get it through. Here's Allison, beat in front, knocked down, scramble side of the net. Good save, shields in the rebound into the corner. Nickel racing for it, rips it away and down ice. 35 seconds to go in the coincidental minors. 38 seconds left in the power play. This is Allison. Pass it to skate, knock loose. Pirates have it back. Pops to his blue line. Entering the zone. Batherson lost it on the end of his stick. Plamidia can't clear it out. He does the same thing in return. Off out top now. To Lease. Bounced off his stick and out of the zone. 10 seconds to go. In the coincidental penalties. Batherson with a puck. Up to the blue line, enters his own, moving in, Lease with a shot, just barely missed the wide side. That's off the boards all the way down ice. First penalties expire, four seconds left in this shorthanded situation. Huda now stepping out onto the ice, and the amateur are back to full strength. That brings the fans to their feet here at the War Memorial, looking for everything they can to cheer about as the puck is dumped in by Melanson. Pops back. Jammed up at the side boards, the backboards by Jackson, the puck to the point, and Moore can't get there in time to keep it in, turns now, dumps it in, as the puck bounces out to the side of the net, Pops carries it in front, gives it off, and the Pirates trying to move up ice, bounces loose, Jackson had a momentarily, puck is left lane there, Moore moving in, still has the puck, beat in foot, and they will get a stick on it with the Sharon. Now in the corner, Clementia sends the puck around behind the Pirates net. Moving in for the point, Jackson trying to keep it in. And behind, Pascucci has it for the Pirates. Slips it out in center ice area, taken back by the end. Clementia on the wing, Jackson drop pass, four, beat through the slot, but it was deflected away and carried off by the Pirates. On the attack, this is McCoslin leads the way. It'll be knocked off his stick. Huda can't clear it out as he fanned his turn pass. In front shot. And save Shields. One on one as he stops. Who was that? Burnett. Huck poked off the boards on and down ice. Save of the night so far, Larry. Well, that was a big save. First of all, they kill a penalty, and then Steve Shields keeps him in the game. They're only one goal down. That was a huge save for this Rochester team. And behind the net, Huda after the puck in the corner. Slides it ahead. Now to center race for Holzinger. In the red line, on the right side, moving in, caught, shoots, oh, it's off the leg of Tug, now a big save the other end. Now around the eye in the net, holding her into the corner. Trying to get the centering pass away as he's hemmed up. Khan watching on, pucks in, skates. Khan carries it in behind, trying to get it down in front as he's dumped to the ice, on the puck. It's frozen for a face-off. 8.46 to go in the first period, end-to-end -end action, one nothing. Portland lead, and you're watching the American Hockey League's Calder Cup Finals on the Empire Sports Network. They couldn't beat Steve Shields in close that often, but watch this one. Watch this great play. Christie's right in front of that, and Steve Shields, fortunately this time, had to stick right on the ice, was able to make a big save. That might have been the biggest save of that kid's career because that keeps his team in the hunt, and they're only down by one. Base off in the Portland zone, and you see the shots on goal. The Pirates have the early edge as they've had control of this game so far. Or at least they've had the most offensive opportunities so far. Portland's playing exactly, exactly how they need to play. Ward trying to dig it out. Back to the point. Wrist shot by Huda knocked down. Huck still kept in. Ward tied up in the side boards. And now Holzinger looking to dig it out. Round behind. Still has the puck. Looking to draw it out in front. Khan couldn't get a shot away. Now Khan has the puck again. Sends it in behind. Holzinger being checked there. Gets tangled up. Still has it spinning around to the backboards. Draws it in behind the net. Here's Ward on the front. Backhander. But it rolled off the end of his stick. Holzinger lets it go to Ward. And the net. Now back into the corner for Holzinger. All the way to the point. Kept in by Ender. Out of the sideboards, here's Ward in the slot, moving in, Huda, too deep, can't shoot, Puck dribbles wide of the net. Pirates have it again, cleared away, down ice as the Pirates just ice the puck to get the uh, pressure off here. Back for the Emmerichs, finally Rochester showing some pressure, I don't think they got a shot, however, they did put a lot of pressure on right there. Well, they did, and you see Doug Huda leaving the ice, he was given a nice pass, just 
was handcuffed and couldn't get the shot away. And there you see Barry Trotz and Paul Gartner. And the man who's been the key guy for this hockey club, at least in the last couple of games, and probably the biggest reason why they've got to the playoffs, that man right there, Ron Tuckman. Here you see Ruda trying to get a shot away. Good play by the Portland defender. Ruda to keep his stick on top of Huda's stick and didn't allow Huda to get good puck control. Did, however, allow his teammate, a Portland player, to get the puck and ice it. Face off coming to the left of Tugnut, and the Amherst have Sharon, Jackson, and Moore up front with Melanson and Hollinger back. As the puck is dropped, rolls in on goal. Tugnut steers it in behind his net, carried off by the Pirates, but blocked along the near side by Hollinger. The end of the corner, played away to the point, kept in by Hollinger again. Up top, turns, takes a shot, hits a stick, goes wide. In for the right point, Melanson keeps it in. Working out in front, the canner knocked down, scrub over the loose pocket, it's played away by the Pirates. Fed out the center ice, Melanson turns, takes it back, dumps it in. Tugnet stops the puck behind his net. Played by Lazelle on the far wing and then flipped high in the air out the center ice. Hollinger off the glass for Moore. Bounced by him. Played away by the Pirates. So as they battle for the puck now, it's moved in the zone by Jackson. And back to recover the puck. It's around behind the net. Kaufman all the way off of the far wing. In for the point. Melanchon can't keep it in, but Jackson does. Sharon on the sideboards for Moore spinning around. That's back to the blue line and carried off by Zednik. Two on two and now by... Oh, he is drilled by Melanson! What a hit! And Zednik is not getting out! What a hit by Melanson! Whistle now stops play! Holy moly! That young man is hurt and he got hit with a good, clean shoulder from one of the best hitters in this league, Dean Melanson. Get a chance to see it right here. Melanson's already got him lined up, came through and through his shoulder. And the youngster, Zednik, has not got up yet. You see it one more time here. He did not see. He lost control of the puck there, Don. You see that? He lost control of the puck, and as, as Melanson came across, he was looking to try and regain control of it. And he did not see Melanson coming through with the check. Melanson had him teed up right from the red line as he backed across it. This youngster is looks like a shoulder, Larry. He's a hurting puppy right now. Well, it looks like he's conscious. You can see the, the trainer talking to him and at least being able to move his fingers, and that's an awfully good sign. The fact that the youngster is... Well, you love to see a hit like that. You don't want to see the injuries. I'll tell you, that was a tremendous check on the part of Dean Melanson, and we certainly hope that Zednik's all right. Major League Baseball takes center stage tomorrow night at 7.30 as Gary Sheffield and the Florida Marlins travel to Pittsburgh to battle the Red Hot Pirates. Don't miss a single pitch right here on the Empire Sports Network. Well, the youngster's getting taken off the ice now as you see John Tortorella's crew where the incident happened. Some of the Sednik's teammates, in fact, they're going taking him back into the Rochester runway, which is where the doctor's office is, just in the back, a few steps from where he is right now. And he looks like he's mostly on his own, which is a darn good sign. You know, that youngster, I think he's got a great future ahead of him. He's coming out of Portland of the Western Hockey League. I've mentioned almost every game about how impressive he's been. Richard Sednik out of uh, Slovakia, 5'11", 172-pound, 20-year-old, and... He is a strong young man. I think he's going to be an excellent player. Well, this po Portland coaching staff thinks enough of him that they've had him in the lineup for all six of these, or seven of these games. He's got two points in this series. And uh, when you can play a rookie that often, it obviously is a good sign. There you see Dean Melanson, the youngster that came across with a pretty good body check. I should say a youngster, he's a veteran. He's been around here a while. Been around a few years now. He is so strong. It is unbelievable how strong he is. Well, it's 1-0 in favor of Portland, 6.57 to go in the first period. Pirates leading in shot, 6-2. Now Metcalf, Nico Frawley up front, and for the Pirates, it's the line of Hulst, Jindra, and Brunette, which has been put back together. Box slipped down in the zone, and after it goes Nickel. Getting to the puck first and around behind the net. Nickel trying to slide it in front. It rolls off his stick into the corner. Played away to the point, kept in momentarily by Clementia. And now the Pirates have it. Feet away to center ice. Pass up the wing here. Shindra across the blue line. Breaking in. Shoots. Head save. Shields. Not sure where the puck is. Comes out in front. Batted away to the whistle to stop. Play. Shields again robs Martin Shindra, who leads the playoffs in goal scoring so far with 15. Well, if there's any question how Steve Shields was going to play tonight, we 
That's been answered, and here's another great scoring opportunity by Portland. Steve Shields comes out. He doesn't back up in his end. He comes out, shuts everything off, and says to the Portland player, if you're going to beat me, it's going to have to be with a great shot. A little bit of help from the defenseman, but Gendron just doesn't get the puck away where he wanted to. I think he tried to go 5-0 between Shields' legs. He wasn't able to do it. Steve Shields made another big save for his hockey club to keep him in the game. Well, this series 3.57, but you looked at the first uh, two series, he was under two, and I think he was somewhere around 2.1 after three series. So the uh, Pirates have gotten Steve Shields, but he has made some huge saves, however. A lot of folks were wondering how he was going to react to tonight's game being game seven, the youngster, and all the pressure on him. And again, I think he's answered that call. Back to the point, Leask. Out of the sideboards, being chased into the corner. Backhands it in front, picked off by Hollinger, and the Amherst have it. Lips it off the boards out of the zone. There it's picked up by Holzinger. The red line, the blue line. Holzinger in the front. The con head is stick top. As he couldn't get a shot away. Now Mord moving in. Flips it, but it puts it wide. And that's poked off the glass away and down ice. This is taken by Ender. The rookie defenseman will dump it in. Tugnut blocks it in behind his net for his uh, veteran defenseman, Stu Balgunas. Scored the game-winning goal last game. Locked now at center ice. Picked off again. The Amherst have it. Holzinger to Ward. Being in foot. No, it's a skate, doesn't get through, and then it's tipped out the center ice by the Pirates. Amherst have the puck back. Still some Rochester players in the zone trying to get loose, and finally do so, and the Amherst will make a line change. Here come the Pirates. Hoffman up the wing to Mazur. They head for Batherson. Gets it in the zone. That's knocked away by Lamentiev. Bangs it along the boards, finally clearing the zone, and now it's taken right back by the Pirates. Kaufman, drop pass, knocked away. Amherst take it. Here's Brown, feed to Nickel, trying to split the defense, can't do it. Tipped ahead by Primo, but Nickel didn't see it in behind him. And it's poked through the backboard, Pascucci jammed up there. In their skates, Primo has it now tied up as lays down, covers him, and it's carried off by Kaufman to the Pirates. Here comes Portland on the attack, leading 1-0, five minutes to go in the first period. In the zone. Loose, taken by Komeniev, sends it in behind, but Lazell, the only man there, however, can't control it. And Primo sends it around the wing, that's through and down ice. Christie chasing the rolling puck down in front of his own net. Both teams making quick line changes here, 4.48 to go. In the first period, 1-0, Portland on top, and the puck cleared off the boards, through to center ice. Buda back to recover it from his own blue line for the Amherst. Off to Clementia, moving up ice. Winds up, long shot in, head save, Tugnet. He'll cover up and hold on for the faceoff. 4.36 to go in the first period. 1-0 in favor of Portland, and you're watching the American Hockey League's Calder Cup Finals on the Empire Sports Network. Pucko ringside with Amherst Hall of Famer Jordy Robertson, who also has two Calder Cup rings. How big is it to get those? It, it means everything. These are the things you remember for the rest of your life. And as I was telling the people today, driving into the game tonight, I had goosebumps. My legs were shaking when I heard the ovation here. This is what you dream about from this tall on to be in a seventh game and score a winning goal. Jordy Robertson with a cup in 82 and 83 with Adirondack and Rochester. Back to Don Stevens. Uh, he had some hands. Now Holzinger. Hollinger make that off to Melanson. And around behind, trying to spin it out in front. Jackson can't do it. Greg Sharon for the Amherst. Back to the point. Here's a shot. Deflection just wide. Missed the wide side. Tipped in front. Melanson plays it in behind. On the back boards. They get wrapped up. Sharon down on the ice. And the other Sharon from Rochester watching on. Eric Sharon of Rochester. And Craig Sharon out in front. The shot taken by Jackson but missed. Here's a centering pass attempt by Hollinger in behind, deflected around. In from the point, Melanson shot in front, that's knocked down, scrambled with a loose puck. Nobody knows where it is, Tugnet's playing on the ice, still the puck is loose. And finally now Moore, no, the whistle stopped play, and the Amex had it set up for a shot. Puck was loose, Moore had the puck, but the whistle stopped play. I believe the, the net may have been knocked off its mooring in the far corner. The referee did lose sight of the puck, but the Rochester players are saying, wait a minute, we had control, but why did you do that? The closest Rochester's coming come to get a, getting a goal is these plays right here. There's about three whacks at it. And finally, right now, the referee blows his whistle just as Barry Moore is about to unload his shot. You see the replay. In fact, Tugnut made the save, but then lost sight of the puck. Wasn't sure where it was. His defenseman team in to help him out. And they played awfully strong in front of him so far here tonight. A shot that was not going to count anyways. 7-4, to four, the shots in favor of the Pirates. One nothing, the score in favor of the Pirates. Ward in front, shot, just missed wide. 
Now over the point, another shot, stick stop, Tugnut. They poke in the loose puck at the side of the net. It's in behind. Tugnut gets back up and in front. Now it's carried off by Batherson. He's upended. Down on the back, Ward's Ward trying to dig it out from underneath. Batherson, it's kicked into the corner. Ward pulls it loose. Has the puck at the side, Ward's side steps to check. Moving in front, shot wide. Huda chasing it down to the point, but away with the puck. Here comes Mazur, getting back as Ender. By the Amherst, Jay Mazur stops, takes a shot, and is pushed aside by Shields. Huda sends it around the wing, and that's through and down ice. It's Khan, went after Malgunis, will have a penalty coming up. This is going to be against the uh, Emmerich's? No, it's going to be against the Pirates' interference call against Portrait. Ron Tugnut thought the penalty was against Rochester. He started heading for the bench. Well, it, it was a silly penalty for Stu Malagunas to take because he comes down low to take out one of the Rochester players, and it becomes an interference call. That's what he's going to get the two minutes for, but he had no business doing it. The puck had gone past him already, and the player, the Rochester player right here, was not in play anymore. It's Rob Kahn. This allows the Rochester Americans a chance to get back in this game before the end of this period. There's 3.18 left here in this first period, and they're down by a goal, but they're on the power play. Stu Malgunas is going to be in the penalty box for part of or all of the next two minutes. I don't know. It almost looked like Malgunas had Khan lined up on maybe a payback check on the hit on Zednik. You, you just got to wait your time, and sometimes you don't get a chance to... to uh, get anybody back in a game seven there's things that are more important things like winning the hockey game and Stu Malgunas took a silly penalty he's got a pretty good team behind him that can, that can kill it and he's sitting there with his fingers crossed you bet well this is only the ninth time in 52 years the Calder Cup Finals has gone to a game seven here in the American Hockey League and in those eight games played the home team has won six of them nine times in 52 years to go to game seven See a little ice repair work going on. Rochester in game sevens in their history, six and one. That includes all rounds in the playoffs. Portland, of course, only the third year of existence. One win and one loss in game sevens. Very interesting note there. We also had a note, uh, too, in, in game sevens of just the Calder Cup finals. Rochester, one win, no losses. And this is the first time in Portland Pirate history they've been in a game seven in the Calder Cup finals. Face off coming to the left of Tugnut. Rochester power play. First opportunity of the night of the man advantage. Last five games, seven of 20 for 35% for the Amherst on the power play. One nothing. Portland leading. In the corner, Pops rips it off the boards. Can't get it out as it's blocked there. Sharon for the Amherst trying to dig it out. Moore watching on. Curtis Brown tied up and it's frozen long enough for the faceoff. Game 7. We're certainly happy to have you folks with us. I'm Don Stevens along with Larry Playfair and downstairs is Bill Paco and we welcome those of you watching on Nesson, the New England Sports Network. Also HTS Home Team Sports of Washington, D.C. and live tonight in Portland, Maine on WPXT Fox 51 to have all of you with us tonight. Here's Curtis Brown moving in, moving in. Backhander couldn't get it out in front. That's picked off and kept in the zone. Brown watching on. Batherson right on him. Brown shot in. Stick stop. Tug not. He's on. The puck holds on as Moore tries to jam it away. Curtis Brown took the puck down low, ran out of room, and then came back up to the half wall. Had nobody to pass the puck to, so he elected to just dump it in towards the front of the net and hope that somebody would tip it, or if there was a rebound, he had a player there to take a whack at it. You see the shot right here. It's not really a shot. It's more just a pass. Nobody's there, and Ron Tuckett makes an easy job of hanging on to it for a faceoff that's going to take place to his left. Shots are evening up now. Seven for the Pirates and six shots for the Amherst. As the puck is dropped, goes behind the net, Pops has it there. Shoots it off the glass away and down ice. Minute 27 to go in this power play. It's Brian Holzinger up front along with Kahn and Ward. The point man Hollinger, or Jackson's on the ice also. Now that's knocked loose by Mazur and he'll slide it away and down ice. Well, the Pirates came up with a short-handed goal last game. And have had two short-handed goals in this series. And both of them have been game winners. In the zone now. Ward in the slide. And it picked off his stick. It's pulled away by the Pirates. Dribbled out to center ice. Take it right back by Codd. 
Slides it off on the wing for Ward, entering the zone, weaving his way into the slide. Ward has it, fakes a shot, pass off, moving it, Holzinger, shoots, knocked down, tugged that, scramble with the puck, but tugged that is on and holds on for the face off, and everybody piles up. A couple of nifty plays by Dane Jackson. Dane Jackson, you see in front of the net now, he knew he was going to get pumped. Here, here's Ward with the shot. Pass down low to Holzinger. Now watch this. Jackson just starts poking at the puck, and you know, and he knows he's going to get smacked anytime now, and he turtles, bails out of the play as Lisa comes in. And gives him a smack, and there's Dane Jackson, the captain of this hockey club. Led the American Hockey League in shooting percentage this season. He has not done a whole lot as far as actual points in that in the playoffs with four goals, six assists, ten points, but has certainly contributed in other areas, most notably is that on the power play getting in front of the net. Well, and that's what he did there in that play too, was go to the front of the net. He knows he's a big kid. He knows what it takes to, to, to pay the price. He knows you're rewarded sometimes, and he doesn't mind getting beat up now and then. Spent a good portion of the season up with the Buffalo Sabres also. Base off to the left of Tugnut. 50 seconds to go in the power play. 2.07 to go in the period. The draw to the point. Hollinger to Ward. Can't get a shot off. Now feeds in front. They poke at the puck at the side of the net. That's pot loose and cleared into the corner. As the Pirates up with the puck. Still now they're able to poke it away and down ice. Yeah, so Jay's after it. Terry Hollinger back. Fourth in the American Hockey League this year in points during the regular season. The fourth leading defenseman, that is. There's the puck up ice. He was with the St. Louis Blues last year. Hollinger slowed up at the blue line. Puck is underneath uh, Christie and frozen there for a faceoff. And Hollinger uh, last uh, this season had a total of 55 points in 62 games. Look at Christie right there. Great job by Christie who chased Hollinger out from behind the net then followed him up the ice and was able to, to knock the puck off of Hollinger's stick and actually ended up falling on top of it to force his faceoff. Good job on the penalty killing team. 20 seconds to go in the power play. Shots now even at seven apiece. The draw taken by the Amherst. This is Huda. Pass deflected away and now recovered by Clementia. Sends it cross rink. Brown to Moore. To Sherrod. Here come the Amherst. Sherrod slides it a hit for Brown trying to split through the defense. Buck batted aside to the point. Clementia takes a long shot in high and wide. Brown chasing it down there. Slides it behind the net. Sherrod on the backboards. Spins it in behind for Brown. Chasing after it. Curtis Brown out of Prince Albert in the Western League. That's along the near side, but not out. Still kept in at the left point area by Moore. For Craig Sherrod, slides it toward the net, but can't get it through. Back to the point again, kept in. Now blocked it away and out the center race with under a minute to go in period one. As Plemeniev, checked there by Allison, almost put into the, into the penalty box. On the far wing, hitting picks up, and the Amherst have it back. Metcalf. Back hands it in. After the puck in the corner, now Gunas right on him is Nicola the Amherst. Now Gunas able to slide it up the wing, and it's played away to center ice. Picked out of midair by Nicola the Amherst. Take it back. Here's Metcalf. Shoots it in. On goal, and it stopped off the left knee of Tugnut. I guess that would be actually the right knee. Out in front, spin around by Frawley, and it's blocked aside by Tugnut. Cleared on and down ice by the Pirates. Chased after by Ender. Right on him, Chendra. Now the iron of that Ender plays it back around the wing, but getting to the puck first is Brunette to keep it in in the slot. There's a shot that it can't get through, fanning on it. And it's pulled away and out the center ice. Nickel crossing the blue line, drops it off to Melanson. Feeds it in front, it's deflected away by Tugnetti to the far corner. Five seconds left of the period. There it's Holst. Now behind his own net. Penalty, in our period rather, expires, and we have had all kinds of action in the first period. One goal being scored, and that by the Pirates. Portland scoring four minutes and eight seconds into the game, and a commanding lead in shots on goal. But the Amherst have come back to a lead in that department, 9-7. to seven. Portland, however, still holding on to a 1-0 lead. And you, you kind of had a sense, Larry, that maybe the tide turned a little bit halfway through that period. Well, I thought Portland uh, really came on strong like they did in Game 6, played very well and very Trotz is talking to some of his players as he leaves the ice, but I thought Portland came on the same way in this first part of the first period, but then I thought Rochester countered that after Steve Shields made some key saves for them, and they came back and had some good pressure on Ron Tugnett. However, they've not been able to get one past him. And that's the big question right now, as we talked about over and over in this uh, 
uh, early stages of this game tonight as the goaltender. Well, it really is. And, and John Tortorella told me last game before the start of game six, he said if there's a player that can make a difference of all the players out on the ice, it's if he's tugged on. I'm afraid he could win a game on his own if he got hot. So we've completed one period in the Calder Cup game seven finals here tonight in Rochester, New York. It is Portland leading one to nothing. And again, you're watching the American Hockey League's game seven on the Empire Sports Network. After a period of play, the Portland uh, Pirates are leading the Rochester Americans by a score of one to nothing. The Pirates for the fourth game in a row in the series, scoring the game's first goal. Bill Puckle with you between periods and with Rochester defenseman Terry Hollinger. Terry, uh, back from a period at the front. How's it going out there? Oh, well, it's going pretty good. There's uh, lots of fun out there. We came, uh, you know, on in the second half there. Uh, it's going to be a battle the whole uh, whole game, and it's going to be very close. I mean, it's been close the whole series. Portland came out hard, harder than expected. You think off the top? No, it's uh, what we expect. I think uh, um, you know they got a lot of energy, and we got a lot of energy for a seven game, and and uh, we're just uh, want to play every every uh, shift here hard and uh, see how it goes. Uh, there's still 40 minutes left to get one goal here, and, uh, and hopefully we can get two to win the hockey game. This uh, series has been described as a battle of wills. Has that been pretty much true through a period here? It sure has. Uh, you know, it's June 13th, and uh, the only uh, thing that wins right now is determination and will, and. Uh, I think uh, both teams are showing it, and uh, you know their goalie made some uh, heck of a saves in the, in the first period. Uh, our goalie made some good saves, so that's what it goes down to: is determination and who wants it more here in Game Seven. You know, each team has played about 100 games so far this season, and you know both of them know that this is the last game. You really try hard not to leave anything out there. Well, that's true. We got uh, a couple months uh, to rest, but so we're not uh, leaving too much uh, out there right now. We just want to uh, try as hard as we can and. Uh, Hopefully good things happen for the Amherst. In terms of this team putting Game 6 behind them, where things didn't work out real well on your home ice, was there a different approach to Game 7? Uh, yeah, there's a little different approach. I think we were a little tight uh, going into Game 6. Uh, all the hoopla that was 